In this lesson, I want to go over the general interface and a few key features of a great new web design app called Sparkle. Sparkle lets you design and build a website visually without doing any coding. It also doesn't require you to start with a template of some kind. Over the past few weeks, I've redesigned the MacU.com with Sparkle and have really enjoyed working with it. To download or buy Sparkle, click the link below for an instant 15% discount. So I'll launch Sparkle now and start up here with a brand new site. Sparkle's interface reminds me quite a bit of Pages, which makes sense because Sparkle works much like a page layout app. Let's start up here in the middle of the window. This is where I can add elements to the page. Click the text button and a text box is added with placeholder text. I can click and drag to move the box around or resize it. Over to the right is the style pane. Click insert lorem ipsum filler text and I can now use the style settings to set a font style and color. Notice up here that Sparkle uses paragraph styles, also much like pages. Now let's add an image. Clicking the image button places an image box on the page. Over in the style pane, I then need to click add to locate the image that I want. Scroll down to the media section in the sidebar to pull images right from iPhoto. It's also possible to drag an image right into the Sparkle page. Now this is where one of Sparkle's best features comes into play. I brought in the full-size versions of these images, which is displayed here. They're both 4912 by 3264 pixel images. Typically, this size is way too big for a web page. Below that, though, Sparkle lets me know what image resolution will work for each image. 1x, 2x, and 3x refer to resolutions needed for retina or high density displays. Since these images were already large, they're going to fit for 1x, 2x, or 3x. If I add a different image that isn't as large as the others that I've added, it might only look its best at 1x, which refers to a non retina display. On a retina display such as a 5K iMac, or pretty much any newer iPhone or iPad, this image is going to look a little blurry at this size. But if I reduce its size, the resolution improves. If I go small enough, it will even work at 3x. So the lesson here is to add your best, highest resolution images to your Sparkle pages. Then let Sparkle do the work behind the scenes to optimize them for display on different devices. It will save multiple versions of a photo, and when the page loads on a non-retina laptop, a different version of the image will be presented than if it loads on an iPad Air with a retina display. There are several more elements that can be added here, including an image gallery, menus, buttons, or a map. We'll cover these in future lessons. Along the left side of the window, all the pages of my site will be displayed. Click the plus button down here to add a new blank page. Hover over the page icons to either duplicate the page or to delete it. In the upper left of the window is a zoom menu, which is currently set to auto fit. So as I resize the window, the page will zoom in or out automatically. Click Device here, and then Customize Device Layouts to create separate layouts of your pages for different devices. 
This is going to let me rearrange the content on this page to display differently on a smartphone in portrait orientation. We'll touch on this a bit more when we get to previewing pages. Next is the Layout Grid button. Click this and I can set how many columns are in the grid or if it's displayed at all. Currently I have the default 12 columns. Changing to a different amount of columns will help you lay out different elements of your pages neatly. Over to the top right corner now, we have Settings and a Preview button. Click Settings and the Page and Site panes become available. In the Page pane, I can add a name for the page and for its HTML file, along with the options to add a description and keywords. Below, I can set the alignment and background color or pattern for a page. Setting a background will cover the full page background, no matter how large the browser window is expanded. Click the Site pane to add things like Google Analytics to the page or a website icon. A website icon is the little logo that appears in the address bar of a web browser. If you don't want to deal with creating optimized images for retina displays, the 2x and 3x boxes here can be unchecked. Now let's look at the preview button. Under preview availability here, I'm going to switch to computers and mobile devices on the network. This will let me test my page layouts on an iPhone, iPad, or any other device on my network by simply going to one of these addresses in Safari. I have Safari checked here, so when I click Open Live Preview, Safari will display the page just as it will look when online. This preview is truly live, so when I change something in Sparkle, it's instantly updated in the preview. No need to reload the page or anything. Now I'll bring up my iPhone and go to the Sparkle preview address. Here's how the current site loads on my iPhone in portrait and now landscape orientation. If I go back into Sparkle, and switch the device layout to the one I made for a portrait smartphone. That's going to be previewed now on the iPhone. So you can really dial in the best layout for your site on a variety of devices. So that's a quick look at the very basics of Sparkle. If you're interested, click the link below to download the free trial or purchase Sparkle at a 15% discount. If you'd like to see more lessons on how to use Sparkle, please let us know by email. Thanks for watching.